In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to analyze and solve for values for a compound circuit. If you take a look at this compound circuit to the left, this one looks fairly complicated. If you take a look at this circuit to the right, this one looks fairly basic. You want to make sure you're very aware of all the rules for a series and parallel circuit so you can easily and effectively use Ohm's law in solving for things such as current and voltage. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. If we're taking a look at our first compound circuit over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on breaking it down and simplifying it until I get to the most simplified form and then I'm going to work my way backwards. Okay, so what I mean by that is as I'm taking a look at it now, I see a few parallel chunks. So I'm going to take my smallest little parallel circuit, which is over here. Okay, and I see two branches and I'll just call this the, the blue parallel circuit because I labeled it in blue. And we're going to go ahead and use our equivalent resistance or total resistance formula and create a single resistance that represents this whole entire parallel chunk. So how I would do that is this is a little mini series circuit, which is a total of eight ohms. So I'm going to do one over two plus one over eight equals one over RT. So what we can do for this is because the lowest common denominator isn't that tricky, I can go ahead and change this to four over eight. And then we have five over eight equals one over RT. Okay, so that isn't our answer. Uh, we wanna go ahead and do a quick little cross multiply. And then our answer comes out to be eight over five ohms which in decimal form is 1.6 ohms. All right, so this entire blue chunk turned into this 1.6 ohms that we got over here. And we've simplified it down one step, and I see one more parallel chunk, and that's this red portion over here. Um, so now we have two branches. This branch combined over here is 3.6, because it's the 2 plus the 1.6. And then this branch over here is the 4. So we can go ahead and do the same sort of setup we did earlier and do one over four plus one over 3.6 equals one over RT. Okay, now because this one doesn't look quite as nice as the first one, what I can go ahead and do is just use my calculator and I can do one over four plus one over 3.6 and I get 0 0.53. Okay, be careful because that is not my answer. I'm going to do a quick little cross multiply as I did before. And my answer is one divided by 0 0.53. And then my final RT is approximately 1.89 ohms. Okay, so that's where I got this little chunk from. All right, so I simplified it as much as I could and I don't really need to simplify it any further from here. So what I can do is treat it like a regular series circuit problem and I can find the total resistance, the current and the voltage drops for both of these resistors. And then I'm gonna work my way back over to the left, expand it out and I can find for any current or excuse me, solve for any current or voltage drop for any of the resistors shown in my original picture. So let me go ahead and solve for all the values for uh, my picture farthest to the right, and then we'll go from there. What I did is I treated it like a regular series circuit problem. I found my total resistance by summing these two numbers up, which is pretty simple, and I got 4.89. 
And then I used Ohm's law, uh, the voltage over that total resistance, and I got a current of 4.09 amps. And anytime you find the current for a series circuit, it's that same 4.09 amps everywhere throughout the circuit. Okay, so with that being said, I can find my individual voltage drops and I can just use this version of Ohm's law, which is just rearranged to find for the voltage drop. So I'm just gonna take I times R, my current times my resistance. So that 4.09 times three, and I got a voltage drop of 12.27 and then 4.09 times 1.89, 7.73 volts. Okay, and what I normally do is do a quick little double check and make sure it equals that total voltage drop of 20 volts. So 12.27 plus 7.73 is exactly 20 on the dot. Okay, now when you do some rounding, it might not add up to that 20 exactly. It could be slightly under or over, um, but in this case, it does equ uh, equal that 20 volts. All right, so now we're going to keep on working our way to the left. And this 3 volt one, excuse me, this 3 ohm resistor um, is already taken care of. We already know the current moving through it, and we know the voltage drop through it. And now we know this entire chunk is represented by this 1.89, and that gets 7.73 volts through each branch. So I have 7.73 over here. And I have a total of 7.73 volts for this branch over here. So what I can do is I can go ahead and find my current for each of these branches because current is V over R. So we're just using Ohm's law a lot of different ways um, to find our different solutions. So if I take V over R over here, I know the current going down through that branch comes out to be 1.93 amps. And then if I take V over R over here, it's 7.73 divided by 3.6, because 3.6 is the sum of these two. And then the current moving this branch through this branch is 2.15 amps. Okay, now if I go back, I can find the individual voltage drops. So it's going to be 7.73 for this entire branch if I wanted to go one step farther and find the detail of how much of that 7.73 dropped through this one and this one. I can do I times R. And I get 3.44 volts and then another I times R, 2.15 times 2. And I get 4.3 volts. Okay, so now we've taken care of every component of that version of it. And then now we can slide to our final version. So we already took care of the 3 ohm resistor, which was all the way back here. So we know the current and the voltage for that 3 ohm resistor. We know um, everything for that 4 ohm resistor, 7.73 volts and that 1.93. That's this one over here. And then now we can take um, this chunk over here and then analyze it with some information we got over here. Now we're also oh, we're also done with this two ohm resistor over here because we know that it's a 4.3 volt drop um, and a 2.15 amps of current that's flowing through it. So to finish off, we are going to say that this 3.44 volts is this parallel circuit right over here. So this branch gets 3.44 volts. And this branch gets 3.44 volts as well. And we could do the same thing we did before and do V over R. And then we get a current of 1.72 amps through that single two ohm resistor. And then if we do V over R over here, it's V 3.44 divided by 8 because there's two 4 ohm resistors. So the current flowing through this section is 0 0.43 amps. 
Okay, now to get my final details, if I wanted to find the voltage drop through each of these, um, because they're the same resistor, you could take this and divide it by two. Um, or you can go ahead and take this current and then do I times R. Remember, I times R equals your voltage drop. And either way you do it, you get 1.72 volts. So what you can do to finish off is if you want to do a little bit of backtracking to see if the math um, matches up to the rules of what's happening with the current and the voltage, you can always do that. Um, I won't necessarily go through all of those steps at this moment, but say, for example, if you're taking a look at these two branches, we have 0 0.43 and 1.72. If you add those together, that is 2.15 amps, which is equivalent to this. And then if you take this 2.15 amps and then you add it to that 1.93, that comes out to 4.08. And because of some rounding, that's slightly different than this 4.09 amps of, of our total current. Um, but what you can do is sort of backtrack and double check some of your work to see if you did all the math correctly. Um, in fact, the first time I did this, I did make a mistake and that helped me catch my mistake. And then I went back and I found where my error was and I corrected it. So again, what you want to do is you want to simplify the look of your circuit as much as possible from a compound circuit to the most basic series circuit. And then once you get your currents and voltages, then you, what you can do is backtrack and find the finer details of the voltage drop in the currents through each of your little mini parallel branches. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze and solve for all the values for a compound circuit. Thank you for watching and listening.